Okay, so let's start reading the story about, it's called The Horse Snake. And yesterday we read about the author. We talked about Vietnam. That's where the author is from. I'm going to try and make this bigger. And the kids and I, yesterday, we discussed Vietnam is mountainous and jungle. So kind of gives you an idea. So before we start reading, we look at the title. Remember, when I when you come back on the next day you come back to class, I'm going to look at your packet and make sure that you have marked it up and answered the questions that are on the side. So make sure that you do that. So the horse snake, what do you think the theme? Because remember, the author usually puts the theme of the story in the title. What do you think um, the theme of this might be? Go ahead, Cohen. A myth it could be a myth, which is a genre. What what could the theme be? And the theme is um, what the story is all about, right? The main idea. Go ahead. Okay. So you see, yesterday we went over it's narrative nonfiction. And the term narrative means story, and nonfiction is true. And this is a memoir, so parts of this story are true, but the author added elements of fiction or elements of plot to help it seem a little more interesting. So added characters, added um, events, you know, the rise in action and the climax and stuff. So the theme of this story probably is about, um, well, can't really tell by this, but obviously it's about a snake. So maybe um, don't be afraid, because I know when I hear a snake, I get scared. I don't know about you, but I don't like snakes. Some people do. So don't be afraid could be a theme. And then I'll tell you what the theme is at the end, because there is a particular theme in this story that we can't get from the title. So let's start reading. So once again, I'm going to model to you active reading. That's why I'm going to read this to you. You can do my active reading or you can do your own active reading if you feel comfortable enough. But remember, um, active reading stands for ask questions, make connections, track down your answers, make inferences, visualize, and then Eureka. Despite all his courage, there was one creature in the jungle that Tank always tried to avoid the snake. Now I'm going to put a question here. Who is Tank? Yesterday in the pre-reading strategies over here on this page, it talked about the author and his favorite water buffalo. His name was Tank. So if you did not read this page here, then you wouldn't have that background knowledge. That's why it's important that, that you read everything. So there's my A, here's my T. Tank is um, the water buffalo. And there was one kind of snake that was more dangerous than other snakes, the horse snake. In some areas, people called it the bamboo snake because it was as long as a full-grown bamboo tree. Yikes. Yuck. In other regions, the people called it the thunder or lightning snake because it attacked so fast and with such power that its victim had neither time to escape nor strength to fight it. Now, I believe that the um, horse snake is, is real. Um, I haven't had a chance to look that up, but this is a memoir, and memoirs are true. They're a particular story from a person's life. They're not a biography where biographies start at the beginning of a person's life and move the way to the end if they're dead. Um, a memoir is a particular event, and we all have probably one story that has shaped our lives that we could write a memoir about. 
So I know that the horse snake is real. I'm not sure if, if what it looks like, I got a picture on classroom and it has the head of a horse. I don't think that's what it looks like, but like I said, I haven't had time to look it up and I will, cause I wanna know. In our area, we called it the horse snake because it can move as fast as a thoroughbred. Now, a thoroughbred is one of your vocab words that I pulled out. So I want you to be able to know what a thoroughbred is. Obviously, there must be something special or different about a thoroughbred versus just calling it a horse or the author would have put in a horse. Here's a picture, you can't see it real well. On page 126, now in classroom, the story is linked under the title. It says the horse snake and it's underlined. That's where you get the story if you need it. One night, a frightened friend of ours, our families, banged on our door and asked us to let him in. When crossing the rice field in front of our house on his way home from a wedding, he had heard the unmistakable hiss of a horse snake. Ooh, that would just freak me out. We became very worried, not only for us and our friend, but also for the cattle and other animals we raised. Now, yesterday when we did the pre-reading, we talked about chronological order. We reviewed that the root cron means time. You guys by now should know chronological order means to put things from oldest to newest. Reread lines 10 through 14. What is the first event in this section? selection? Record the event and the time of day on your timeline. You don't need to do a timeline. Our active reading will do that. But let's answer this question. What is the first event? Who's him? Good. The friend heard the hiss, the friend. Of the horse snake. It was far too. It was too far into the night to rouse all our neighbors and go to search for the snake. But my father told my cousin to blow three times on his buffalo horn. Now there's a little footnote. I'm going to look down below. Buffalo horn, the horns of water buffalo are sometimes used to produce music or other sounds. The signal that a dangerous wild beast was loose in the hamlet. Hamlet is also a vocab word. I want you to look that up and see what a hamlet is. Us, usually people in literature, when you, um, go ahead, Cohen. That's right, it is a small village. Um, usually you think of Shakespeare, he wrote um, a play called Hamlet, but in this context, it's not capitalized. It is called, it is a small village. A few seconds later, we heard three long quivering sounds of a horn at the far end of the Hamlet, answering our warning. Quiver is also one of your vocab words. I think we had that in uh, one of our stories. I think it might've been seventh grade, maybe Amigo Brothers. We presumed that the whole hamlet was now on guard. B, narrative nonfiction. What does the term narrative mean? If you see narrative, you should think of story. You guys do narrative writing in English class. And that means you write a story. What are the people in the Hamlet in conflict with? Think about what they are guarding against. Now that's pretty obvious because we've done a lot of talking. But yesterday we talked about the types of conflicts that are in reading stories in life. And just to refresh your memory, man versus man, man versus self, man versus society, man versus nature. What kind of conflict are they having right now? Man versus what? Man versus nature, but also could they have another conflict? What would my conflict be? I told you I'm scared to death of snakes. What kind of conflict would that be? Yeah. Like 
there's no way that I go hunting a snake. I I would do it if there's no one left, but I'm not gonna go do it. Um, just I'm not that brave. I'm a, I'm a chicken. I stayed up late. I stayed up that night listening to all the sounds outside. While my father and my cousin sharpened their hunting knives. Shortly after midnight, we were startled by the frightened neighing of a horse. Oh, that doesn't sound good in the rice field. And frightened neighing lets me believe, gives me a certain connotation, gives me a certain feeling. Makes me feel like Ugh, something bad happened. Then the night was still, except for a few sad calls of nocturnal birds and the occasional roaring of tigers in the jungle. Nocturnal is underlined. Nocturnal means active at night. And hopefully you guys know what that means. If um, animals are nocturnal, they come out at nighttime. The next day, early in the morning, all the able-bodied men of the hamlet gathered in front of our house and divided into groups of four to go and look for the snake. My father and my cousin grabbed their lunch and joined a searching party. What words or phrases in this paragraph help you understand the order of events? So can we, what help us know that they are going from first, second, third? What's one phrase? How about next, right? Okay, that's the only one I see so far. So you want to pay attention because remember authors give you guys clues to help you when you read certain genres. Everybody agreed that it was the work of one of the giant horse snakes which had terrorized our area as far back as anyone can remember. The horse snake usually eats small game such as turkeys, monkeys, chickens, and ducks. But for unknown reasons, sometimes it will attack people and cattle. A fully grown horse snake can reach the size of a king python. And, you know, I think most of you know what pythons look like. They are huge. Down below in the footnotes, a large, heavy snake that can grow to a length of 20 feet and kills its prey by squeezing it to death. So 20 feet. The ceilings are typically 8 feet. This might be a little bit higher. That's a big snake. Oh, I would never want to. So those are the kinds of animals, reptiles, that live in the jungles. The men searched all day, but at nightfall they gave up and went home. My father and my cousin looked very tired when they returned. My grandmother told them to go right to bed after their dinner and that she would wake them up if she or my mother heard any unusual sounds. In what way does the men's return at nightfall add to the suspense? Okay. Okay. So protection may be down, right? Whoops. Protection. How else? It, aren't we taught that darkness is scary, right? Things creepy go around in the dark. Now, I didn't put it on here, but I'm going to because we have talked about the different types of connections, but since just the way things are, I don't think it's really gotten into your brain. But I've made several connections here. I hate snakes. That's a, my own connection. Okay? Um, I think that's about the only one that, <laughs> that I've made constantly. Um, I could probably do some more. Did you make a connection? Okay, go ahead. So it was probably a, a boa constrictor. Because um, there was one at a fair, and my son, when he was seven years old, he uh, held it, and it started to wrap its tail around his ankle, and his, his legs started to turn around, and we're like, okay, that's fine. Get the snake off him. <laughs> but I mean, it was obviously harmless. I don't know. 
The men went to bed and the women prepared to stay up all night. My mother sewed torn clothing and my grandmother read a novel she had just borrowed from a friend. So I'm gonna make my own connection just to show you the connections. Remember some stories, now this, I, I kind of like this story, so I'm probably gonna remember it, but there are some stories that we read that are just so dull, so boring, that we need to make connections um, to help us remember it. So a certain type of, I'm gonna make, this is a text to self, which is the, what the other one was too. Um, I, I can relate to the grandma because I love to read. Um, I'm always reading. Now, you see, you may not have the same connection, and that's okay. We're all different creatures. But learn to make connections, and one way to make a connection is text to self. And for the second night in a row, they allowed my little sister and me to stay awake and listen with them for as long as we could. But hours later, seeing the worry in our faces, my grandmother put aside her novel and told us a story. So here we go, grandma's telling a story. What's that called in literature? I'm thinking of flashback, but I guess it wouldn't be kind of a flashback, but perhaps it would be like a flashback. You need to know that grandma's speaking here. Once upon a time, a happy family lived in a small village on the shore of the South China Sea. They respected the laws of the land and loved their neighbors very much. The father and his oldest son were woodcutters. The father was quite old, but he still could carry home a heavy load of wood. One day on his way home from the jungle, he was happier than usual. He and his son had discovered a wild chicken nest containing 12 eggs. When I read this, I was like, wild chickens? I didn't know there were wild chickens. Perhaps in over here, we know it takes place over in Asia. There must be wild chickens. Now he would have something special to give his grandchildren when they pulled his shirt sleeves and danced around him to greet when he came home. The father looked at the broad shoulders of his son and his steady gait under a, a very heavy load of wood. Now, this isn't gait like the gait I know. So I'm going to use context clues to figure out what this word means. The father looked at the broad shoulders of his son and his steady gait. So what are they doing? I, I need to know what they're doing. They're carrying wood, right? And so when the dad looks at him, um, he looks at his broad shoulders and his steady gait. What's a synonym for gait? This kind of gait, G-A-I-T, um, is the way someone walks. So um, stride would be a gait, uh, would be a synonym, but gait means the way someone walks. He smiled. His son was a good son, and he had no doubt that when he became even older still, his son would take good care of him and his wife. As he was thinking this, he saw his son suddenly throw the load of wood at a charging horse snake. Oh, that just, sorry, that just sends shivers down my spine. That had come out of nowhere. The heavy load of wood crashed into the snake's head and stunned it. That gave them enough time to draw their sharp woodcutting knives. But instead of attacking the horse snake from the front, the elder shouted to his son to run behind the big bush of elephant grass nearby, while he, who was a little too old to run fast, jumped into the front end of the bush. Each time the snake passed by him, the old man managed to hit it with his knife. He struck the snake many times. Finally, it became weak and slowed down, so he came out of his hiding place and attacked the snake's tail, while his son attacked the snake's head. The snake fought back furiously, but finally it succumbed to the well-coordinated attack of father and son. So that's what I'm visualizing in my head. I'm visualizing a well-coordinated attack, working together to kill this snake. Succumb means to give in, die, quit. When the snake was dead, they grabbed its tail and proudly dragged it to the edge of their village. Every, everyone rushed out to see their prize. They all argued over who would have the honor of carrying the snake to their house for them. The old woodcutter and his son had to tell the story of how they had killed a snake at least 10 times, 
but the people never tired of hearing it. So this leads me to believe this story turned into what happens when stories get told generation to generation. It becomes a myth or a legend, right? Because things get added to it. They didn't kill that snake 10 times, but it a, makes a good story. They all agreed that the old woodcutter and his son were not only brave, but clever as well. Then and there, the villagers decided that when the chief, also a brave and clever man, died, the old woodcutter was the only one who deserved the honor of replacing him. Narrative nonfiction. What does the grandmother's story suggest about the way the conflict between the people and the snake might be resolved? So... I don't know if I heard you correctly, but so it suggests that they should work together and attack it from both ends. So be united. Very good, Cohen. Right. Very good. So right there, you made an inference, whether you knew it or not. It didn't say what to do, but with your reading skills, you were able to make an inference and get the idea of why grandmother told that story and what she hoped that the grandson would get from it. Okay, so you need to finish the rest of this story. Make sure you answer the questions that are on the last story. Any extra writing that are on it, like the extension and challenge that's on this page, you do not need to do. Um, if it tells you to write something, we don't need to do that. We're not doing writing so much this year. Um, just answer the questions that you can front and back and we'll go over it on Thursday. So you guys need to get the root words into your digital notebook and the vocabulary words into your digital notebook and do the homophone packet. And then Thursday, we will clean that all up, have everything due. And for the Harry Houdini one, that's, that's last week it's done. Oh, that one needs to come back. I'll collect that Thursday. Oh. Uh, do that and that will come back on Thursday. Elliot? Yeah. 